Uh, but listen, there is a very important news today from Labour, who have anal been analysing the crime statistics, showing that 4.7 million crimes have not been solved. That's 87 per cent of crimes reported last year. You report a crime nine times out of ten, it is not going to be solved. What on earth is going on? Uh, the, it just gets worse and worse. Peter Blacksley is with me. He's a former Metropolitan Police detective and a re regular crime commentator. Lovely to see you in the studio, Peter. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Hope you had a nice Christmas. I did, lovely. Lovely. Uh, this, these statistics are incredible. 48% of the cases remain unsolved because the police failed to find a suspect. So there were 4 million... 772,503 crimes reported in the year ending to June 2023. That's the latest uh, time for which we have statistics. And so many of these offences going unpunished, Peter. And these statistics, as dreadful as they are, cannot be relied upon. And I'll tell you why that is. Because so many people that I meet increasingly who are victims of crime, and I say to them... Did you report it to the police? They say, what's the point? Yep. This comes on the raft of a, of a litany of dreadful stories this week about policing, that 22 out of the 43 police forces in England and Wales are inadequate or require improvement yeah. with regards to investigating crime. So even when they do investigate it, Clearly, many of those investigations are falling well short. And a very serious note on that, I was talking to uh, somebody very senior in the world of representing victims who will have to remain anonymous, but they deal with sexual offences, rape, horrific crimes, and they said to me, one of the reasons why the conviction rate is so low, and of course the charging rate, is because the investigations mm. are not what they should be. Now, if we had all of your shows this morning to talk about crime and policing, I could cover every aspect of why policing is where it is. But let me tell you now, please, if I may, because the police in recent years surrendered the streets, they stopped patrolling the streets and became a 999 response service. So they just went from one call to another. So stop patrolling the streets decimated neighbourhood policing, community policing, call it what you will. Subsequently, the streets were surrendered to the criminals. They also turned their backs on us. The police turned their backs on you if you were the victim of burglary, car crime, cycle theft, phone theft, do you really think that's shoplifting. A do you really think that's a fair thing Absolutely. to say? Absolutely, and I haven't finished yet. Uh -huh. And fraud, mm -hmm. the real elephant in the room yes, that does yes. not get investigated. Yes. They just gave us a crime reference number. Mm. For all of the aforementioned, they didn't investigate it. If they, they will say, of course, they had reasons for it. But that is the core fundamental part of policing. It's what connects the police to the public and to victims. And they just turned their backs on us. So what has happened in recent years? The police have become irrelevant to the moderate wow. mainstream of the UK. That is, that is a they big statement. That utterly is a big statement. irrelevant. Wow. Because they do not tackle and investigate the crimes that matter to the every man and woman in the street. Goodness and man. that's where they're at. So when they bang on about trust and confidence, mm. actually what's been lost is respect. Wow, that is that is a big statement. The police are irrelevant, says Peter Blexley, former Metropolitan Police Detective. What do you think? Tell us what you think about this. 0344 499 1000. Have you been a victim of crime? What What has your experience been with the police? It's really interesting you mentioned fraud as well, Peter, because there is so much crime that is online these days as well, and so many people... I, I barely know a person who hasn't been a victim of some form of online crime. And what usually happens is that... You're defrauded by your card or whatever. You don't contact the police, you contact your bank. And the banks put it together and then, if they want to, can present something to the police. But I know I was defrauded about £400. I got the money back from my bank. And I know £400 is a lot, a lot of money to me, but not a lot of money to my bank. They'll have written it off. They'll have written off millions, if not billions. And that will never be investigated because whoever perpetrated that crime will have done it to 10 other people in 10 other parts of the UK or maybe around the world and there will be no case put together. They'll just get away with it.
And this week it was revealed that the vast majority of these online frauds originate from outside of the UK. Yeah. So thereby, perhaps, giving UK law enforcement almost an excuse to not investigate it. It needs dealing with at governmental level well, it's because it's international. It's interesting you mention that. This is a, a story from Labour. We did ask for someone from the Labour uh, Home Affairs team. They weren't available this morning. But Labour has slammed the Conservatives for, as they put it, letting criminals off and letting victims down. Similar sentiments to what Peter has said. Figures showing the near record numbers of victims are dropping out of criminal proceedings. 1.6 million people dropped out of criminal proceedings last year. Um, I was chatting to someone recently, a barrister, who was uh, prosecuting various crimes and was saying that this is a massive problem. And often when uh, things like rape statistics, for example, you've got a 1% or 2% chance of, uh, if you are allegedly a victim of rape and it goes through, of actually getting a conviction. It's very, very low, but a lot of people drop out of those criminal proceedings. And the more high-profile the crime, the more, more likely people are to drop out. Record numbers of crimes Labour say are being dropped due to no suspect being identified, 2.3 million last year. And the overall proportion of crimes charged has dropped 60% since 2015. That was on the Conservatives' watch. Labour say they want to change that. They want to put 13,000 additional neighbourhood officers and uh, police community support officers back into the heart of communities. Would that help? Would that ar arrest the development? Would that solve the crime? Well, what I'd say to the Labour Party is that talk's cheap and policing's expensive. Yeah. So we'll see where they get the money for that from. And, of course, wokeness, fluffiness and a liberal kind of attitude towards policing runs through much of the Labour Party like the word Brighton runs through a stick of rock. So we shall see if they deliver, if they get elected. Policing is in absolute crisis, and with regards to these investigations, what the police also did along their way towards abandoning the streets and turning their backs on so many victims was that they subcontracted mm. the investigation mm -hmm. of crimes out to victims themselves. Yes. Because you or pick the up the banks, phone. for example. Yeah, yeah. You pick up the phone, yeah. you report the crime, and, of course, the call operator says, do you know who did it? Do you know where they live? Have you got any CCTV? Peter, there is Have so you got any evidence? They there, subcontracted yeah. investigating crime to victims of crime. But there are so many people who will say, look, I've got ring doorbell footage or equivalent doorbell footage of someone breaking into my house, or I've got my find my phone um, data. We know exactly where this is. And still the police don't do very much. Yeah, well, of course, we've had recent pledges, haven't yeah, we, now, yeah. about how they're going to start investigating shoplifting once again. Perhaps don't hold your breath, shopkeepers. Please don't. And also how they're going to, what they originally said was, attend every burglary. But then, of course, people like me picked up on the language because they're trying to make fools out of us. There's a difference between attending a burglary and investigating yeah, a burglary. Yeah, yeah. So they've tweaked the language now and they said they're going to do it. But already I hear anecdotal evidence that that is not being achieved as we speak. We shall have to wait and, wait and see. But, of course... This goes back a, a policing generation and all those who now occupy the corridors of policing power and we'll get onto their Yeah, let me ask you about that in a second. Yeah, in yeah. just a moment. Yeah, yeah. They're all highly educated, trotted off to university, mm. came back with business degrees or criminology degrees and all that kind of stuff, invented ridiculous policies, meaning that every police officer had to have or achieve a degree during yeah. during training and nonsense. their probation. Absolute nonsense. Came up with ridiculous expressions like healthy churn. So for them, it was good to have a police officer serve for three, four, five years or so and then leave. Again, utter abject mm. nonsense because an experienced cop gets better and better yeah. with each and every day of that learned experience. And they've come up with all this tripe, the College of Policing, the National Police Chiefs Council, and they are all the educated types with their university degrees. And do they believe in healthy churn at the top of policing? No, of course they don't, because they're in the positions of power. They've practised themselves at climbing that greasy pole of promotion, which they're very good at, whereas some of them have huge question marks over their actual mm. policing ability. And many of them getting gongs, actually, in the New Year's honours list. Tell us about some of the people who've got their uh, police medals and other, other gongs, Peter. I know you've been looking into this for us. How apposite that on today of all days mm. we get to talk about policing gongs. Right. Well, the most notable one 
Martin Hewitt, already a QPM, so Queen's Police Medal, awarded to him when the late Queen was still alive, he has been awarded a CBE, a very, very senior, yeah, highly one, one prestigious yeah. gong. It really is, because he's recently stood down, having been chair of the National Police Chiefs Council. Again, very senior position yeah. within policing. And in the in the glowing comments which are which are written about him today in receipt of his CBE, it points out, of course, that he was in charge of policing and policy and such like when things like BLM protests right. were occurring, yeah, right? Yeah. And look how many daft, stupid, ill-informed, idiotic police officers took the knee, mm. thereby surrendering their independence, policing without fear or favour, fundamentally underlying everything that is important to British policing, and also in environmental protests. Well, how did the Just Stop Oil protests go mm, start exactly. with? When exactly. I was sat in here in this very studio saying to you the police should be acting, mm. that's the act and section, the law they should be acting under, and they weren't. Anyway, he's got his CBE. Let me just rewind a few short years, if I may, to what Mr Hewitt said, and this actually bleeds into everything we've been talking about yep. this morning. He said, of course... We are talking here about victims of crime, and crime is a minority, not minority percentage of the activity we are undertaking. So said Martin what? Hewitt when he was an assistant commissioner at the Met Police, said that crime a was minority? a minority percentage wow. of what they are undertaking, and which, the which cuts across all of that, them turning their backs on us. OK, how they've largely become irrelevant. They're not irrelevant if you get murdered. That's one way to guarantee yeah. that there will be a well-resourced investigation. But, of course, for the victim of that crime, it's all a bit too late. Yeah, exactly. Goodness me, how do these people get these gongs? <coughs> Incredible. Lots of people getting in touch. Uh, one person doesn't want their name read out, and totally understandably, because they're a serving police officer. I admire Peter Blexley, but please don't judge us all like the Met. My force may not detect a lot, but I know we investigate everything we can. Sadly, there's, there are not enough officers. There's a lack of experience. Also, our neighbourhood teams are on the ground, and great, not all forces are the Met. Uh, Mr Angry in Huddersfield, I'm not sure that's his actual name, uh, says Peter Blexley should be Home Secretary, he's soon sort our country out. Um, and uh, Dan says, what a novel idea, police investigating crime, whatever next, border force controlling borders, or even doctors seeing patients. It will never take off. Uh, Cardi P, great to see you back, looking forward to the show. Lots and lots of people getting in touch on this big issue, uh, Peter. And so much to discuss as well. Um, this is really, we're, we're in a crisis, aren't we? We certainly are. And thank you very much to that serving police officer who understandably, anonymously got in touch. And if, of course, he listens to every word I've said, it's not been the front line that I've had yeah, in my sights yeah, this morning. Yeah, that's right, that's it's right. It's those that sit at the top of the policing. A constable on the ground is not responsible for the policies that are implemented by the National Police Chiefs Council and the College of Policing. It's not the cops on the front line that say talk about healthy churn and the need for degrees. It's the clowns in the positions of policing power who prowl those corridors and think they know best and were responsible for turning their backs on the public and therefore becoming largely irrelevant. Peter... Uh, I need to ask you a less important question, and this is that I had a very sore throat over Christmas, and one of my friends said, look on the bright side, your impression of Peter Blexley just got better. Can I give you my Peter Blexley impression? Please, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the leadership of the Metropolitan Police is a shambles. Well, I would use slightly <laughs> different language, <laughs> but um, I, I, I think that's a 7 out of 10. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That's not too bad. Not too, I've got a crystal one as well. Do you want to hear the crystal one? Yes, please. All right, babes. Hmm. That's my crystal one. Four out of ten. Four out of ten, OK. Peter, thank you so much. You've given us a lot to think about. There are loads of people getting in touch about this.